Um, another quick just hot key that I'll mention, your space bar brings up your grabby hand so that if you need to move stuff around, you can hold down the space bar and kind of drag it around. I will probably do that a lot without thinking, so I just wanted to make sure that I mentioned that. Okay, so now we'll start some fun stuff to me. Um, we're gonna just start defining text. Now, most often when I do this, I'll start by defining the P paragraph. It's gonna be the majority of our book. It's the body text. And then we're also gonna use it to base a lot of things off of because we're gonna come up with these conventions about breaking, hyphenation, justification, that we wanna be consistent throughout the whole thing. So if we get it right in one place, and then give us the option to base other styles on that. That way, the nice thing is that, A, everything's gonna be consistent, and B, if we decide to make a conventional change, or if we decide maybe we wanna change the body font, all I need to do is change in that one place, and because it's linked to everything else, there will be this cascading change that happens throughout the whole document. So you're not going through and, oh, I forgot I changed P, but I didn't change PF, so now it's a different typeface that we didn't notice. So we're just trying to kind of be methodical in the way we're doing this. So let's grab a piece of text, and I can see that's P. I just grabbed any piece of text. I just want to make sure that P is the style that's selected. You can see it's either highlighted or, you know, you might see it up here at the top of the window as well. Now, all of our styles have these little kind of download boxes next to them. That means there's no definition. It means the designer hasn't done anything to define them. When we're reviewing these files, we want to make sure that there's a definition for pretty much everything. So I'll right click it and I'll say edit. And this brings up our paragraph style options. There's a ton of stuff in here. We're not concerned with everything. Um, what I'm concerned about is our basic format. And then we're going to talk about um, indents and spacing. Then we will talk about keep, hyphenation, and justification. So basic things here is now we're just gonna define what the main typeface of our book is gonna be. Is it gonna be something classical like uh, Garamond or something like Bembo? Is it going to be something a little bit more modern? You know, we could use like a, Google has a font called Roboto. This may or may not be in your book uh, or in your computer, but if you click that drop down you can see all the fonts that are typically available to you. And you can see right there, when I clicked on that, it changed everything that is um, associated with P to that style. I'll give everybody a minute to kind of check out some options, try things out, give me a thumbs up or, a, or like an okay in the chat when you're ready to go. I'm gonna figure out what I wanna do. I think I want Museo Sans Condensed. Yeah. Let me go back to Roboto. And I'll just let you know while I'm looking at this, right now we're using the regular weight. You have all the different variations of your font in that second drop down. So, you know, obviously we don't want the body text to look like that. That's pretty assaulting, um, pretty hard to look at, pretty hard to read. Um, I kind of thought even the regular looks a bit heavy to me. So I'm gonna maybe try to drop it down a little bit. Like let's go to light, see if that works out better. I'm gonna move on here as well. Just stop me if anyone needs a little bit more time. Um, next thing is the size. So 12 point is kind of what we think about for a Word document, but it's a little big on the page. A lot of times you might use something like 11 points, maybe 10 and a half for your body type. Kind of depends on the actual look of the book. And then letting. Letting refers to the actual line height of your paragraph. Fun fact, it came from when people were doing rolled print and would put bars of lead like between the rows of type to increase the line height there. So, fun fact. Now, if anyone, if you're ever on Jeopardy, now you'll know. I demand a portion of your winnings. Um, I'm gonna change that to 15 or so. I start to like this a little bit better. I hit enter, by the way. Um, you know, we're looking at kind of the weight of the text on the page. I could maybe go a little bit heavier with the actual letting. 
So maybe I want to bring it up to 16 or so, start to space it out a bit. And at this point, let's say I'm satisfied with how the page or how the text sits on the page. Uh, then we're going to go and change the justification. So for me, I prefer justified text. I know some people don't. Some people like this kind of what's called um, rag. But for me, I'm going to change mine to left justify. So now all of our text is kind of lined up really evenly. In addition to that, there's another convention that we want to introduce here. We want to make it easier for the reader to identify a new paragraph. It gets a little difficult here because everything's kind of run in together. So there's two things that I can do to indicate to the reader, like this is a new paragraph. I will briefly solicit for answers. So what, what two things could we do here to indicate to the reader, like, hey, this is a new paragraph. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And actually, I mean, both of the things are kind of available just as this, um, as this option indicates. You know, I could choose to add space above. You know, choose to add a line space above everything. Um, we've seen textbooks that do that. That's perfectly normal. You might see that in magazines or something like that. Adds a lot of space. Or as Kathy indicated, we could indent. Which is a little bit more normal. Okay. That's like starting to look like a book now. That's kind of exciting. And by the way, if I'm being way too basic with this, please let me know. I, I'm trying not to leave any stone unturned. Um, the next two things I'm going to talk about are going to relate to how your internal um, guidelines may go by. And I'll just tell you what our internal guidelines are for something like this. Uh, we want to avoid bad typography by having a line at the, like a single line at the top or bottom of the page. So we're going to use a tool here called keep options. And we're going to say keep two lines at the start and end of a paragraph. That just makes for really good typography. We avoid, you know, portions, widows, things like that. And then hyphenation. These are InDesign standards. They'll hyphenate five letter words before and after two. Our guidelines are six letter words before and after three and a hyphen limit, which means the end of a end of a row. We change that to two. That way you don't have three hyphens in a row. And then we don't hyphenate across pages or columns and we don't hyphenate the last word of a book. That just helps us avoid sort of like gross breaks, bad typography, things like that. We kind of build in these rules so that there is no way that InDesign can make these bad breaks. Those are our internal guidelines. There's certainly presses that don't do that. You might allow the first line of a paragraph to be by itself on a page. We don't. Um, and then the next thing I'm going to change, and again, this is more of a preference thing. And I think not every like type center scribe does this. I like it. Uh, it's something we learned when we were at NYU doing a doing a talk, which is kind of neat. So letter spacing, we're going to change this to minus two and maximum positive two. So this will kind of adjust the actual spacing of the letters turning, if you will. And it seems like if I kind of undo and redo that, it, it makes it a little bit more of an even text density on the page. That's kind of what we're concerned about when we're looking at typography. You know, is it making an even sort of gray tone everywhere? I'll show you a quick example of what that looks like if it was bad. And this is a kind of extreme case. But this is a lot more dense. This is a lot more wide. And you can kind of see, even as a reader, you're like, you know, your eyes are kind of going a little bit haywire because you're like, ooh, this is different and kind of weird. I'm not paying attention to the text anymore because I've hit this super dense text and I'm like, something's different. It's interrupted the flow of how I'm reading the book. I'm just going to clear those overrides. So that's what we're kind of driving at in these basic text setups is we're looking at nice, even, gray tone of text, well balanced, and we're trying not to introduce any sort of like bad conventions that are going to interrupt the flow of the text for the reader. And I'll just show you real quick. The nice thing that we can do now that we have our body paragraph set up the way we want it. I'm going to go to another paragraph. So I'm going to find a PF paragraph. 
you guys can use this as a guideline if you're at the same spot. Now, like I said earlier, I can base something on that paragraph, so I don't have to do all those steps again. I can just say, well, P F is based on P from the same family. And the only difference is that it won't have an indent because it's occurring after a head, so it doesn't need an indent. It would be you know, kind of redundant to put an indent on something that's occurring after a section break. And just to show you kind of nice thing about that, if I decide that I, I want it to be 10 point font, again, every PF paragraph will change because I changed that one style. So we're kind of trying to chain things together as much as possible so that we have an effective use of these styles. So, okay, so I kind of have my body text set up the way that I want it to be. Now, next thing I might move to is I'm gonna think about the next big difference I need to make. I kind of know everything's gonna look like this. If I have a pecan, if I have a P sec, I'm not super concerned about jumping to define those because they already kind of know they're gonna be based on this body text paragraph. And I can just let that take care of the decisions later on. But now I have these heads and they don't wanna base those off P because I want them to be different. I want them to signal to the reader, this is a brand new section. I want the B head. Oh well. Let me look for an A head. And I'll show you. There we go. There's an A head. So we're going to kind of do the same basic function. I feel free to chime in if anyone has any questions, observations, comments. Because right now we're just going to touch on a lot of different topics as we're going through. And this should be the basic formula that your that your um, designer is going to be using as they're going through. You know, defining what we talked about before: body text, defining display text, and letting that big convention sort of guide everything else that we're doing. One thing you might not do, for example, is all your B heads are going to be one font, and all your A heads are going to be another font. Like it's a good way to sort of separate them, but it also might not indicate that it's the same, you know, text flow. If you hit some big giant new element, you're going to stop for a second and say, well, is this a new section? Am I in the same section I was in before? Or am I going to be guided through and say, oh, I can clearly see this is a subsection of this other section I was already in. So we definitely want these to be attention getting. I could maybe choose to make it the same typeface, but differentiate it with like a super bold. Maybe I'll make it all caps. So that really grabs your attention. We'll talk about a little kind of book math at this point. Um, for our body type, we made the letting 16 point, and that should kind of guide us as we're making spacing decisions. And I say that because, I mean, that looks a little tight, right? Like it looks a little strange to have that big bold text occur right after this body text. We're used to seeing a little bit more breathing room, a little bit more space. Um, and if I want to keep things kind of even across the board, I'm going to use that 16 as my guiding number throughout the whole rest of the book. So the math, the, the uh, A heads are going to be the same letting as the body text. I'm going to include space above, and I'm going to use that 16 as my guide. So if I wanted to just make it a single line space above, I'm going to put in 16 PT for 16 points. Now I have an even line space above. Maybe I want a little bit of space below it as well. Maybe I'm making my head, you know, super big. And I want a little space above and below. As long as it's divisible by 16, I know that there's going to be a really clean break and all my text is going to align on what we call the baseline across the board. So maybe I want two line spaces there, but I want to kind of divide it between above and below. So I know 16 times 2. 32. Maybe I can put 28 points above and four points below. Eight points, four points. And now I have a total of two line spaces there. So this line and this line are going to be on the same thread. I have some undefined text up there. Nope. But once everything is set on the baseline, if I'm using that same number as my guide, it's kind of going to do the work for the typesetter because we're really concerned that everything is lining up across the board for a nice kind of even grid-like look to your text.
questions so far? No? Okay. So I'm going to jump to a new type of text that I'm hoping you guys can kind of jump in and inform me about what you think we should kind of do. So let's look at these goals and text after something like goals. So you can kind of look at the style. So it's EX style. This is an LO style, it refers to the learning objective. So like what are some kind of decisions we have here? I'll, I'll get one out of the way. We could just make it look like the rest of the text. We could just make it look like body text. But are there other things that we may want to do? Change the font? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, yeah. Yeah, guys, we can do that. If you had something like maybe like certain text and a colon, things like that. And you could add a box around it, yeah. Yeah, those are really good ways of sort of differentiating this from her body text. And those are the things that really wanna we want to do here. Um you guys may recall that this section we sort of discussed maybe being a repeated element in every chapter. Like every chapter is going to have a goals section to it. So it'll be helpful for the reader if they see this sort of repeated element so they always know, like, oh, that's the goals thing. Um, and let's see. You know, you could even add little icons or things like that um, just to kind of communicate to the reader. You can make it a little fun. You know, like your goal could have, you could even have a little goal post icon next to it or something like that. Um, things that sort of make it a little fun. I think in for the book Elvis and I did, and the author put in these like tips and can't remember what the con was, but it's kind of like a pro and con thing at the end of every chapter. So very simple box around it. And then we add, you know, design these little like thumbs up, thumbs down graphics, just to kind of make sure that A, to make it a little more engaging for the reader, make it kind of fun. And then to make it really easy to see what this whole section was about. Like, oh, here's the wrap up. Here's what to do. Here's what not to do. Here are the key takeaways in this section. Here we go. I'll give a shout out if anybody has any sort of issues navigating in design at this point. Um, I think we're also going to jump to defining some character styles as well. 